your next one on the list is Deaths in Custody. Deaths Martin in Custody. Smith. Fucking hell, Alan, we got. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> right. Um, Martin Smith, people can look his name up. He's from North East. He's obviously dead now. Um, what he did, he nonced his stepdaughter. So he's married, he nonced his stepdaughter. He got two kids himself. So the heat was coming on. So him and his missus fucked off to Spain with the two kids, two youngsters. They they believed in sort of some sort of bizarre afterlife. It was actually on uh, that most haunted. Have you ever seen that? Mm. Psychics and stuff like that. I, I don't watch that, but I've, I've yeah. seen it. I've you know, seen it's it supposed to be a bit of a I psychic. Know what it's about yeah. Anyway, yeah. it was coming on top. They fucked off to Spain. He got caught, extradited. His missus tried to kill herself after killing the two young kids. Oh. So they, she killed their kids. He got brought back to this country. Oh. She got locked up in Spain doing life. Jesus. We got him because he had his trial in Manchester because his solicitor said he won't get a fair trial in North East because uh, everyone knew who he was. He was a fucking horrible bastard from day one. Obnoxious, didn't believe they'd done anything wrong, thought he was going to get off. We had him on a constant watch. A constant watch is for someone who's at risk of killing themselves. Mm. Normally, 24 hours max, the crisis is over. Maybe two days. This fucking idiot were on eight months because the doctor wouldn't take him out. He said he was going to kill himself. He got sentenced to 16 years. One of my mates, bit of uh, screw humour, it might not come across. When he come back, we knew he got his 16 years and we hated him because he was an horrible bastard. Not because not of what he'd done, he was just obnoxious. Mate says to him, uh, bear in mind he's supposed to be a psychic. You're right, Martin. Not really saying anything. He says, what did you get? Because I got 16 years. He says, yeah, you didn't see that coming, did you? That screw humour, you know what I mean? Supposed to be a psychic, Sean. Is it coming through to you? <laughs> anyway, he was horrible. Eight months later, he's moved off healthcare. He's on E-Wing, VP Wing, which is all pedos and that. We sees the SO on there, Stu. Me and my mate says, why is he still here? He's got 16 years. He's settled now, you know. He's going to work. We're taking him off his act form. About two weeks later, he topped himself. He didn't hang himself. He crocodile rolled. Tied something to his uh, bed head, got in bed, rolled, tightened it. His head nearly come off it with that tight. Oh, is that what called? A crocodile roll? That's what he did, crocodile roll, death rolled. However, that lad always said he was going to kill himself, which is why he was on a constant watch. So he goes down statistics, statistics, strange ways, bad place, another hanging. Whatever jail he'd have gone to, he would have topped himself. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. The other thing is, while I'm on this, Let's finish on a, a good positive. Always see deaths, you know, 13 deaths at strange ways in 213 or whatever. So many deaths here. Some of these people can't handle what they've done. Guilt, um, IPP sentences, you've discussed that. Indeterminate, you know, no light, end at tunnel. But I have never seen anywhere how many lives we saved at strange ways or Risley or Liverpool. You know, people who are cut down brought back to life and there's shit loads of them you know people you stop bleeding to death people that you stop who are, who are being badly bullied and things like that now would you go and save a nonce the same as you save a normal lad who's just having a hard time i knew you were gonna ask that right me yeah me and most stuff you'd have a choice in that situation wild man if somebody on e-wing is hanging the staff who would always go in and try CPR, and these staff who don't want to be involved, they don't want to do the paperwork, and they don't want to end up at coroners. Yeah? As it is, I've never been in that situation. But I would imagine it's like the cell fires. You, you do what you do. Some people will run and grab a hose and try and put it out. Other people will think, fuck that, I'm not getting involved. Yeah. You know, so I would, it's, I would it's think, a difficult one. I would think, if I was a guard then, I would think that fucker could molest more kids. Just let them finish themselves. I was. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, but you're bound by your duty, aren't you? Preserve life. Yeah. That, that is what is at the back of mind, but I was never in that situation. However, oh, fucking hell. Have we got a couple of minutes? Yeah, go for it. So I'm at, uh, I'm at Forest Bank. Two cell fires, two lads, both... One who was definitely dead and we brought round. He was called George Fendick. I can mention his name. He's dead now. Liverpool jail. 
you might have crossed paths with him. He was well known. He was an horrible bastard, a druggie, a robber, a uh, bad smackhead. He set his cell on fire. What he did him, um, this this brought a smile to quite a lot of us. He got five years for about 13 burglary stroke robberies, which is fuck all. No. Yeah? He was expected to get a lot more. He appealed it. He weren't happy with that. Everyone told him, including his solicitor, leave it. I don't know how it got to high court, but he managed to get to the high court. He appealed it? Yeah, he appealed it. The daft bastard. He come back with 12. Come back with 12 years. <laughs> Right, I he might have come back with 10 years, but he certainly got a fucking bigger sentence. And however the process worked, that did happen, I'll tell you now. These people I work with who will back me up on that. However, set his cell on fire. So he's an horrible twat. Him, I did not, nobody liked him. No. He got Ep C, Ep B and AIDS as well, this lad, because he used to throw blood products about at you. So we've gone in his cell, he's brown bread. Seg staff, before nursing staff, Got him breathing, he's gone to hospital, we saved his life. Yeah? Another one, another lad who isn't dead, so I won't mention his name. Um, he was a scouser, he chopped, chopped someone's arm off in a road rage incident, some old person, um, and tried to do his missus as well. A fucking proper horrible little bastard. Do you have like a meat cleaver or something? A machete, I think. Machete. Pulled a sort of pull them out bonnet and fucking oh. anyway so he's not he's an horrible little bastard however his was his was a bad cell fire and we weren't alerted till it was in a bad way yeah walk past cell fucking doors red hot you talk to field door it was red hot host pipe when we brought him out um he got some burns to his arms on his back uh smoke coming out you know you're doing cpr yeah. Everyone's coughing like fuck. Saved his life. Not just me personally. I don't mean it like that. Uh, interesting little backup story to that. Um, I'm on holiday. Comes back. So there's a new guy down the seg. Oh, we're off to London with a manager next week. I said, oh, why is that? Uh, getting an award. What for? Saving this guy's life. This lad didn't work on there. Two staff who weren't involved went with a manager on a bit of a jolly... Yeah, she got an award. She weren't there for this lad's life being saved. I don't want a pat on back. Most prison officers don't. You know, cell fires, hanging, shit like that. However, it was a bit off that somebody who weren't involved. This has raised some really good questions, and I'm going to put it to the audience if you can put this in the comments. Number one, if you were a guard and someone was hanging themselves, would you save the life? Depending upon the crimes, would are there some crimes you'd save the life, some crimes you wouldn't save the life? And uh, be truthful as well, don't fucking lie. <laughs> tell the truth. I'll tell them the truth right now. I wouldn't save no nonsense fucking life. I'd fucking put extra petrol on his fucking fire himself personally. So be truthful about it. Next question is you know, Sam's come on by popular demand. You guys have watched hundreds of thousands of views on his videos. Would you like him to come on again? What we've been doing with guests is we've been telling them if the first podcast gets 100,000 views, then we'll consider them to have, to have them back on. Because a lot of people are saying, get this guy back on, get this guy back on, get this guy back on. Please only send those requests if there's 100,000 views. Let us know for the third podcast with Sam what questions you have for him. And what we'll do is we'll print all those questions out and we'll ask them in on the third podcast. 